Well, still looking back over the last 19 years in South Africa, South African style, a few self-esteem issues in this <laughs> chair. Uh, the current crop of uh, South African style icons are known in the public domain. And we have uh, SA Style Awards founder, Jill Grogor, still with us. Joining the conversation now are some of those style icons, no stranger to style, South African TV presenter, actress, dancer and model, Lala Hirayama, and MasterChef SA winner for 2013 mm. and chef and blogger, Com Carmony, as in harmony, Carmony. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to you now to our second thank section thank now you on the nice. show. I want to go to the food first. Food has become such a stylish uh, event in people's lives. All the TV programs, you're, you've done it yourself. Yes. Uh, it's how much of it is actually about the food and how much of it is actually about how it looks? I think you eat with your eyes first, but it's definitely at the end of the day what it tastes like. Mm. I think food, pretty much like music or fashion or film, has got that creative element running through it. Mm. And I'm so happy that chefs are now being seen as those creative people. And I really love the, the phrase that's sort of come out of late uh, about around food media. Uh, what exactly are we talking about? Are we talking about what I would usually do when I go to a new restaurant and the food looks fantastic and I take a picture, then I like post it on Facebook, like look at what I'm having? Or is it something much bigger than that? I feel like food media captures what I do post MasterChef. We've just produced a new food travel show called Girl Eat World and I host radio and I write and you know it's it's everything around the elements of the plate. That is, is fantastic. So <laughs> now Dave, I know you, you don't know Lala so let's introduce you now. <laughs> so Lala you've been described as red carpet royalty. That's a big wow. um, you know title to have but just give us a sense of the kind of pressures and what it means to actually be a real celebrity on a daily basis. When you are being judged, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to the BP garage to pick up a carton of milk, yeah. um, when so you go to the gym, anxiety. right? <laughs> so do you have to constantly be thinking about what do I look like? What's the brand looking like at this moment, every second of every day? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. Absolutely. It is extremely important. But, you know, I've come to realize that Growth in everyone is important. You want to grow. You want to get better. Better. That is the nature of human beings. And so it's not necessary. It, it was maybe a pressure in the beginning. Mm. Oh, I'm getting into the industry. I need to make an impression. I need to look good. But as time went on, I realized that actually, you know what? I'm, this is becoming me. This is who I am. And I'm expressing myself. And as each passing season... I uh, explore more and I grow more and I feel more comfortable within myself and mm. it actually hasn't, it's not about anybody else anymore, it's about me and um, my own personal journey and mm. I think that's... But you know, in the notes that uh, we have on you, Strictly Come Dancing is yeah. one of your things, another one was South Africa's Got Talent. Yeah. In the food area we have competitions. I want to ask both of you a question here. What used to be fun programs have become exercises in humiliation. Because someone, <laughs> someone has to be kicked out at the end in a lot of these things. So Strictly Come Dancing here and the British one, they are fantastic. The food programs are fantastic. But they couldn't resist saying, okay, now at the end of the program, one of you has to be voted out. And then we have tears and distress. Why do we have to have the humiliation? I mean, surely we don't need that. Can't we just it's watch you cooking and dancing? You know what it is? It's called entertainment. Mm. And there's always got to be a winner. And unfortunately, people want to see who wins and who, who loses. But why that do people have to be kicked out? Well, otherwise we'll never find a winner. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think it's your choice of words. Some people just don't get enough votes, as you see with idols and, and, and that kind of thing. But yeah. you, ultimately, I agree with what you're saying. It is about actually getting to a winner, and that's what we want to see. We want to see people winning, right? right. Survival of the fittest. Survival <laughs> of the that's fittest. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so, Jill, I, just, I want to come back to um, designers in, yes. in particular, because if I would look at Lala, I think she probably has a long line of designers clamoring at her door on a daily basis, hoping to dress her so that their, their outfits can be worn by red carpet royalty. How much of the industry is actually led and uh, controlled by designers who want to get their, their garments seen? I think uh, it's very much uh, controlled like it is globally. I mean, if you, you look at the design world globally and uh, you go to watch the Emmys or the Oscars, mm. um, the first thing you see is uh, the stars arriving and they'll go, so who are you wearing mm. tonight? Oh. So 
I think that answers your question in terms of South African design as well. Do we have that culture as strongly as the one might see it in the US? Oh, absolutely. And we've got our king of design, David Clale, mm. um, one of our icons, Gert Johan Kutsia, yes. who couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, he is uh, mm. magnificent in design and his innovation of design and um, most of the stars, I think between those two as well as many others, but they very yeah. much, would mm. you agree, red carpet? Absolutely. Lala, you mentioned uh, earlier being on show, and as he was asking about being on show all the time, and eventually you like you get up in the morning and you're on show to yourself in the mirror, you've got to be <laughs> careful. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, Carmony, is there a time when you sit down and you say, I'm not cooking for anyone but myself, <laughs> and I don't care what it looks like, uh, and what I'm eating out the pot. Do you do, <laughs> yeah, do you Let's not go that far. That. Come on. Do you do baked beans on toast on a Sunday night? Definitely beans on toast, but because I have that eye, I'm going to make the most beautiful Gross. beans on toast. Oh. And I might do it in jeans and sneakers, but you know, I think everyone needs an off day. So talking about, uh, talking about off days, I want to extend this as well. So I think the beauty of David and I is that we're not celebrities because I don't think there's anything entertaining about the financial markets. It's just, it's <laughs> just, it's just work. Um, but do you, do you get off days? Um, and do you have to, on your off day, do be different in the sense of stay home so that you're not out in the public eye? Or can you just have an off day and I'm not on show today and that's it? You know what, my style is carried through my off day as well as my on day. Yes. So if I'm going to pick and pay and I've got no makeup on, but I still feel good because every day, I'm not doing it for anyone else but myself. Mm. You know, I want to feel good um, because that's my brand. I carry my brand wherever I go. And so it'll be jeans and a t-shirt, but it might be designer. Mm. And my hair will be in a beautiful, you know, top bun and I'll be relaxed, mm. but that's my style. You, you know what I want to know? I want to know what's next. I think you guys have achieved so many amazing things. You've got so many titles under your belts. Um, what's next? Lala, what's next for you? Comedy, you know, what's coming out from you from the food media space as well? Do you want to take that? Well, my show Girl Eat World is currently on Netflix North America. It's been broadcast on Food Network internationally. Wow. We're shooting a se second season next year. That's what I want. I, I think that as South Africans, we can definitely have a global audience, mm. and mm. that's where my set. Uh, Fantastic, I just said. Lala. Mm -hmm. World domination, really <laughs> easy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely internationally. I think South Africa is um, is part of the international entertainment. Um, I want to say industry. Yeah. Uh, we are we're very much getting there. We're getting to that same status as America and the UK and Australia. As we've seen with E Network, for example, and yes. a lot of South African celebrities on those on, on those, those platforms. platforms. And so you're saying that this is about to get even bigger. I think it's about to get even bigger and I'm going to be first in line girl. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy, you do radio and television. No. I have done radio in the past. You have, you say? Yes. Yeah. But on television it's made for food. But radio, do you like talking about food? Can you make theater of the mind with food? Do you enjoy that? Of course you can. I think that's part of MasterChef. You cook a beautiful dish and then you present it to the judges. I can talk about food until the end of days. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, I think as a, as a way of wrapping this up, I mean, this has been a learning experience for Dave and I. Possibly people who think of style and just automatically start thinking fashion and best dressed. And so today I think our eyes have been opened. Mm. But if you could, um, communicate with just the broader audience. What is your understanding of style and what do you want to leave us with in terms of this is what style actually is? Well, I think just really it's reiterating what we've uh, threaded throughout the show. And um, it's, your, it's your career path. It's why I'm enormously proud of these two young girls because what I want to say to all the young people out there is whatever your goal is, Use young women like we have in studio. Use them as your inspiration. Um, work hard and your success and your career path can come to. Well, that's where we have to say thank you to the founder of the SA Style Awards, Jill Gregor. Uh, TV presenter, actress, dancer, and model, and Lara Hiroyama. Taking the world, taking over the world. Take, yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> so no shortage of ambition no. Uh, <laughs> around here. And uh, you have to thank Carmen as well. Get, may I? Uh, yes. yes. I, want to, I want to get her number because there's some recipes <laughs> I want to tell her about that I've got. 
Comedy uh, Partha <laughs> is the chef and blogger. She'll also take over the world by the sounds of it. Of course, and uh, she is obviously at the face of the Global Food Show.